Amen. So let's all stand one more time as we celebrate God and give a God bless you warm welcome to Pastor Kabelo Mabalani. One, two. Come on, city of Goshen, let's appreciate the man of God. Thanks, Jim. One, two. Thank you for the, for the warm welcome. Uh, but that was good enough for me, thank you. But I want you to make a noise for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He's the light of our salvation. He's our shepherd. He's our king. He's the beginning and the end. Amen. He's the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. He's our righteousness, our sanctification. He's our peace. He's our salvation. He's our healing. He's the Lord of angel armies. He is who he says he is. And he can do what he says he can do. Father God, we just thank you for this time in your presence, in your word. What a privilege it is to be counted amongst your sons and your daughters. Thank you that I get to be called a son of God. Lord, I thank you for anointing me to have me say what you want your sons and daughters, your priests, your kings, your queens to hear this evening. And thank you for anointing every single one of us to practically apply what is spoken forth. Thank you that as the word goes forth, it will go unhindered, unchecked by any forces of darkness because you stripped them of their sham authority when you hung on the cross more than 2,000 years ago. Thank you that as the word goes forth, it will be followed by signs, wonders, and miracles. Jesus, you are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And I pray this in your matchless name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. What a privilege it is uh, to stand in front of you this evening. And uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Pastor Colin, his wife, uh, the leadership uh, for entrusting me to come share the word of God with you uh, this evening. It's not something that I take very lightly when a pastor entrusts another shepherd to feed the flock. It's not a, it's not a small thing. It's a big thing. Amen. And Mfundisi uh, Colin Kilipansula for life. It says for life. So it's not for 1996 or 1990. No, no. For life. Amen. Um, I'm very passionate about what I'm going to share this evening. It is a revelation that has absolutely re revolutionized my life. I am the man that I am, and I'm grateful to my spiritual father, Pastor Ray McCauley, for instilling this in us. Um, and there's many, many men and women of God who've instilled this, this truth. Let me also say this. We sit here this evening because of what Jesus did, right? We are called Christians because the creator of the universe saw it fit to leave the throne and come and visit us to restore us back to himself, right? That's, that's, that is what it's about. That's what it's about. It's about the creator of the universe stepping down from the throne, coming down to reconcile man back to himself. That, that's what happened. That's the story of the Bible. That's why we are called Christians. That's our faith is founded on that. All right? So we best excel in understanding what that is. We best excel in understanding the work of Jesus Christ. We, we, we can excel in, in many, many things, you know, leadership and... Uh, many, many spiritual truths and fundamentals. But the reason we are who we say we are is because of this finished work, right? Paul says that I may know him, right? 
and the power of his resurrection. And then he says, I pray that you grow in the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him, know him, the creator of the universe who stepped down from the throne to come redeem us. We, we, we should be spending more time on the finished work of Jesus Christ because it is about the finished work of Jesus Christ. It is about the gospel. It's always been about Jesus. It is about Jesus and it will continue to be about Jesus. So if it's always been about Jesus and it is about Jesus and it will continue to be about Jesus, we best know who Jesus is. We best know what Jesus did. We best know what Jesus came to do. We best know where Jesus is right now. Amen? It is about Jesus. The title of my share this evening is called Sheep and Pigs. Sheep and Pigs. All right? The difference between sheep and pigs. Sheep and pigs get muddy and dirty. However, they view their experience much differently. Sheep get muddy and dirty, but they don't like to get dirty. Their nature is different from a pig. The pig loves to get dirty and loves the mud. The pig is, the pig is occasionally clean, but prefers to be muddy. The sheep is occasionally muddy, but wants to be clean. A pig will be happy to stay perpetually in the mud. A sheep won't. A sheep won't stay in the mud. It's not its nature to do so. Now imagine that on a farm it rained for days and the pen outside the barn was a muddy mess. The mud was so thick and deep that one of your animals was stuck in the mud. Completely covered in mud, you actually couldn't tell what kind of animal it was. It was just a pile of mud with eyes looking at you. Days pass and you don't know what to do. The animal is still in the mud. So you call the veterinarian and you say, Doc, I have an animal encased in the mud in the pen outside the barn. Can you help me identify it? He asks, what kind of animals do you have on the farm? You say, I have sheep and I have pigs. The doctor asks, how long has this animal stayed in the mud? You say, he's been there for a week. Well, sir, the doctor says, I can tell you, it's a pig. But you say, I talked with the animal and he told me that he was a sheep. The doctor says he can say whatever he wants. But if he's in the mud that long, there's no way he's a sheep, no matter what he says. I want to talk to you about the state of sin versus the act of sinning. The state of sin and the act of sinning. Because there's a confusion. And you need to know which state you are in. You need to know whether you're a sheep or a pig. The state of sin and the act of sinning. Okay? The original sin in the Christian doctrine is the condition or state of sin which each human being was born into. All right? When Adam fell, all of us were born into the state of sin. You are not a sinner because of what you do. You are a sinner because of the state you were born into. You were just born into a state of sin because the, the world had fallen because of the first sin. You say, Cabello, what are you talking about? I say, okay, let's go back five generations, your grandfathers. They have had a direct impact on your life today. So if you can take it all the way back to Adam, the ripple effect, it's had an impact on you. We were born into the state of sin. I'm not making this up. Romans chapter 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. All right? So by the obedience of one, many shall be made righteous. We didn't become sinners by what we did. We became sinners by the state we were born into. Okay? And we didn't become righteous by what we did. We became righteous by being born into. Jesus says you must be born again. Right? So you, 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 you were born into sin, but when you, get, when you got born again, you were born into righteousness. 
1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a dedicated nation, God's own purchased, special people, that you may set forth the wonderful deeds and display the virtues and, and the perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay? You have been taken out of darkness into his marvelous light as a born-again child of God. Why, why am I going on about this? Because too many people have been disqualifying us, themselves. Too many people uh, 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 focus too much on themselves and not focus. You, 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 the, the, the attention is supposed to be on Jesus. Right? The first question asked that God asks in the Bible, He says, where are you? The focus is on you. The first question in the New Testament is, where is he? So you see, we, and now we are in the new covenant. You need to understand, we are now in the new covenant. We are no longer in the old covenant. Are you still with me? He's, you've, tran you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. All right? The process of metamorphosis. The worm turns into a cocoon and then it goes into a, turns into a butterfly, right? The butterfly can fly to the wrong places, to the wrong things, to the wrong people, but it's still a butterfly, right? How many people have thought that when they do the act of sinning in their righteous state, that they go back to a worm? Let me ask the question again. How many people, how many people, because of an act of sin in a righteous state, think they go back to the womb? You did nothing to be born into the state of sin. You couldn't do anything to take yourself out of the state of sin. You did nothing to be born into righteousness. You can do nothing to take yourself out of righteousness. The sin issue has been dealt with. Am I giving you permission to sin? Be my guest and tell me how that works out. God will not be mocked. Whatsoever man sows, he shall reap. But how many people are disqualifying themselves for trusting God to be used of God because of an act in a righteous state. Hmm? Gabelo, you're making light of sin. I say, you're making light of my Savior. You're making light of sin. You're making light of what Jesus came to do. And that's why I want us to focus on what He actually came to do. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. He has come to remove the, our sins as far as the east is from the west. Yeah. When you stand at the North Pole and you walk into one direction, you get to the South Pole. When you stand at the South Pole, you walk in one direction, you get to the North Pole. The Word says as far as the east is from the west because nobody can walk from the east to the west. They are polar opposites apart. That's how much sin has been dealt with. So when you, when you sin today, it's the remnants of the old man. That's not who you are. Paul says, we should not consider each other according to the flesh. So when I see Colin, in, 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 when I see him making a mistake, I should remind him that, no, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are not that. I shouldn't disqualify him now. Oh, he's, you know, he's done. No, 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 no. Remind him he's a righteous child of God because that's who he is. I'm not telling him to make him who he is. I'm telling him because that's who he is. That's who he is. And the thing is, it, 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 it's all about right believing because then it affects your thinking, right? Too many people, they're thinking about who they are, where they are, what state they're in, whose they are, it, it, it affects everything. Your thinking affects your speech. Your speech becomes 
your actions, your actions become your character, your actions become your habit, habit becomes character, character, destiny. All because we believe the wrong thing. The Word of God says, study and show yourself approved, rightly dividing the Word of truth. Rightly dividing the Word of truth. There's people sitting disqualifying themselves. Ah, this is me. I'm, I, I'm struggling with this thing and that's it. God will never use me. Meantime, <laughs> God sees the blood. That's what He sees. He sees the blood. He sees a blood-washed, blood-bought child, son and daughter of the living God. He says, come, I've, I've, so, I've, I've done this. The sin issue is dealt with. It was put to bed. Let's go. Let's go. That's what keeps, that's what, that's what keeps me alive. It, 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 it's, the, it's, the, it's the unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor and love of God that changed my life. What? That's why Paul says, therefore, that, that's, that, that, that's, that's why Paul says, no height, no angel, no demon, no, I always add no success, no failure, nothing. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing means nothing. Because Paul knows what he did. Paul knows where, where he came from. Paul knows what he did, but when he encountered the unmerited, unearned, undeserved love and grace of God, he was like, what? I can boldly become, I'm, I'm a new creature. The sin has been removed, I'm, I'm brand new. And the thing is, the, the word says the righteous shall live by faith, right? It's a faith walk. It's a, it's a faith walk. It's not going to, and what, do you think the enemy is going to be happy that you've discovered that you're a righteous child of God? No, 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 no. He's shooting those darts left, right, and center. He's questioning you. Oh, really? You still smoke? You still swear? You still do this? You, remind him. It's, the thing is, the word says, oh, awake to righteousness in 1 Corinthians. Awake to righteousness and sin no more. It's the revelation of you being a righteous child of God that gives you the power over sin. Titus chapter 2, the grace of God empowers you to live righteously. So when you fully, fully take advantage of the grace of God, that's what empowers you to live righteously. Galatians 5, 4, those of you who are justified by the law, by your works, by what you do, how much you give, what you do, where you fail, uh, uh, your shortcomings. If you are justified by your shortcomings, if you are your shortcomings, the Word of God says, those who are justified by the law are fallen from grace. So grace, unearned, unmerited, undeserved love of God, receiving is a higher way of living. If you don't receive it and say, even after the mistake, even, even when you're smoking, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because let's go back to the beginning. People were meant, we were meant to live forever. If you see the, the, the number, numbers of years that people lived in the Bible was very long because there was life. But because of sin, death set in. And over time, death has set in more and more and more and more, life becoming shorter and shorter and shorter. Right? So now, the opposite of righteousness is true. Continue to confess your righteousness. And it will, it will take hold more and more and more and more as you confess it. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violence taken by force. Jesus came to pay the price. You, 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 like this, it's, 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 this is here for the taking. The grace of God, the unmerited, unearned, undeserved grace of God, it's there for the taking. And I say again, the kingdom of darkness is not going to go, oh really, you're a righteous child of God, okay, fine, go for it. It's not going to happen. The righteous shall live by faith. Are we together, church? Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Do you understand how revolutionary this is? Amen. The act of sinning versus the state of sin. A pig gets into the mud. As a righteous child of God, the, the thing is the Holy Spirit convicts believers of righteousness. Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. When I make a mistake... God, the first thing the Holy Spirit reminds me of, he doesn't say, oh, you're useless. I told you last week you were going. He says, no, you're my child. I love you. You're a son. You're a king. You are more than a conqueror. This is not you. 
Remember who you are. That's why God could go, who told you that to Adam and Eve? Who told you that? He convicts us of righteousness. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 5, 16 to 17. Nor can the gift of God, speaking about Jesus, nor can the gift of God com be compared with the result of one man's sin. What Jesus came to do, you can't compare with what Adam did. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. The gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. Let me say that again. The gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. We are justified. Just as if we've never sinned. For if by the trespass of one man, Adam, death reigned, as I explained, through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? How much more? If death did that, and it's saying you can't compare what Adam did to what Jesus came to do. You can't. Christianity is not making bad people good. It's making people who are dead come alive. People look at me and go, you know, they go, yo, 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 yo. you see this rebrand. They call my life a rebrand. This rebrand, it's for the books. I'm like, because the thing is, you, you have to interrogate the word rebrand. It's, it's got coercion written all over it. It's strategic. It's, I'm going to behave like this so that I get this outcome. I'm going to go to these places, speak to these people, behave in a certain way so that I get a certain outcome. That's rebranding. It's strategic. It's man-made. But what people don't, what the world doesn't understand is I was dead. Now I'm alive. We were dead in our sins. Now you're alive. Hmm? The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness comprehends it not. The, the, the world doesn't understand it. Like, I don't understand what's, what is going on here. Victory over sinning doesn't come from working on one's behavior. Because you're focusing on you and what you can do. I need to stop this. I need to stop this. No, 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 no. Victory over sin comes when we know that we've been freed from the old man, the body of sin, the old nature, and we are no longer in the state of sin, but we are in the state of righteousness. Because I'm talking to believers here, right? I'm talking to believers. I want us, all of us, including myself, to fully lay hold of what Christ Jesus came to die for us. What a travesty it would be get to, to get to heaven and not fully take hold of what he died for us to have. What was the point then? Just going to heaven? I'm born again in a good... It's, it's, not, it's, it's not about going to heaven. Only. No. This, this, this heavenly focus and earthly irrelevant. No, 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 no. The theme tonight is demonstrate. My, my heart's desire is demonstrative power. And sometimes it's not in the spectacular. It's, it's, it, it speaks loudly in the life of a man and a woman yeah. that's, that, 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 that's, that's taken hold of the truth that they've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. They are righteous. And they can, they can do nothing to take themselves out of that state. You can't do anything. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more or less. As a born-again child of God, <laughs> you, you once righteous, always righteous. You're giving people a license to sin. No, I'm not giving people a license to sin. I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm emphasizing who you are. I'm emphasizing who you are. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 21 speaks about how we are reconciled. Reconciled. That word reconciled is the Greek word katalaso. It's, a, it's, a, it's an accounting term. They reckon this, and it means to, ex, to change, to exchange as coins for others of equivalent value. There was a great exchange 
that happened. The great exchange. He took our sin and gave us his righteousness. That's what you need to feed on, church. That you are the righteousness of God. You are clothed, you are clothed with that robe of righteousness. You have a ring on a finger to show that you're a king, you're a queen. He's put sandals in your feet. Remember, in the, under the old covenant, you could not stand in the presence of God. Right? But the prodigal story speaks of sandals being put. Right? Which, which, which shows that you can stand in the presence. Now, in the new covenant. You are the righteous child of God. That's who you are. And nothing. And by nothing, I mean I mean, it's not a trick question. By nothing I mean? Nothing. Some of you are still not sure because you can't believe this. Is, this is the good news. Yeah. This is the good news. Yeah. Nothing means? Nothing. This is the good news. Yes, this is the gospel. Yes. This is the gospel. He says we've all been given a ministry of reconciliation. Go tell the world that God is not angry at them anymore. He's dealt with sin. Go tell them. Don't tell them. Don't tell them they mustn't. They can only come if they dress a certain way, speak a certain way. To, no, no, no. Tell them to come because God is not angry anymore. God's anger is finished. God's righteous, justified anger fell on Jesus, quenched in the sacrifice of Jesus. No more anger. That's why Jesus goes, it is finished. No more anger. All we see is a loving God, a gracious God, a God who's on our side. He is for you. He is with you. He goes before you. He's beside you. He's behind you. He's on your side. He wants you to win. He wants to lead you in a triumphal procession. He's on your side. That's why Jesus came. The law was given. Imagine tonight, if, you know, Pastor Colin asked me to come, then I record this CD and I give him a CD and say, here's the CD, just play it there. Oh, man, but I need to uh, be in 2023. Give him an MP3 player, not a CD. <laughs> play it for the people. How impersonal is that? It's quite impersonal, right? The law was given by Moses. Jesus, <laughs> he came, he, he came, he came. It's personal, he, he came himself, he came. He came off, he came, he came. He didn't say, okay, just tell them that their sins are forgiven and everything is fine. No, 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 he came. He came. He came. And that's the focus, my brothers and sisters. That's the focus, what he came to do. Because that's why we are here. We have the Bible. We are called Christ. You know, we wear crosses. It's all about Jesus, right? So what? let's get surgical. What did he actually come and do? Oh, we worship you. We honor you. Because the thing is, it's when you then have a revelation or understand what he's done, you will worship, you will give, you will serve, you will, you will just, you're just like, yo, he took my place. You will want to serve. You will want to be there every time the church doors are open. You will want to share the gospel. You will want to do that because you realize, what? Clean slate. Unearned, unmerited, undeserved. All for me. All for me. Amen. Amen. Even his name, Jesus, the Lord is our salvation. He came to save. That's what he came to do. Matthew 1, chapter 20, Matthew chapter 1, 21. She will give birth to a son and you shall name him Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. That's what he came to do. So church, if he came to do that, do you realize that the sin issue is a big issue? 
he, 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 like he, the creator of the universe wouldn't have come down for it's a big issue it's a wrestling people are wrestling people are disqualifying themselves people are condemning themselves people people aren't coming back to church because they say this is too difficult i can't do this making them f focusing on themselves but you realize when we preach the gospel we, we, we remove the barrier to entry we remove the barrier to entry. And the fact that us, we here tonight, we, 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 we got an inkling of an understanding of what that was. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So let's water that seed. Let's water that seed. Nurture that seed. Take care of that seed. And that's the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith is not a prayer evening where and then we're done. We're like, yeah, you see the devil tonight. Yeah, he got a good shot. That's not the good fight of faith. The good fight of faith is fighting to get back to the place of remembering who you are. That's the good fight of faith. That's the good fight of faith. And faith, simply put, is, is a good opinion of God. It's having a good opinion of God that He actually did come to do this and He removed our sins as far as, as the East is from the West. So the good fight of faith is remembering that I've got a good opinion of God. I remember who I am. The devil can't, he can't, that he can't win against. Somebody who's standing with their full armor and just standing and seeing the salvation of the Lord. The devil doesn't know what to do with that person. The world is always saying, don't stand there. Do something. Jesus says, no, 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 no. I, I, what I've done is enough. Stand. I'll do something. But why are we not seeing victories? Because it's like, uh, I'm not sure if you actually do, did do it. Let me actually, let me help you. Let me help you. You are the righteousness of God. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. 1 John 4, 17 says, As He is, so am I in this world. As He is. Let's then picture, okay, how is Jesus right now? Majesty, wealthy, healthy, peaceful, strong, powerful. As he is, so am I. As I stand here in front of you, I am as righteous as Jesus is. I am as holy as Jesus is. My holiness is not based on my performance. It's based on his. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. It's not about us. Take the focus of yourself. It's about whose you are. When you look at self, you're going to find plenty. But when you look at him, that's why it says 2 Corinthians 3, 18, and we with unveiled faces, those of us who are born again, the veil has been taken off. It says, and we with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So now, what does that basically say? You behold, all you need to do is behold, then you are transformed. Not behold and then go do. Right? And I, and, I, and, I, and I like what you said. Fasting is good to help us discipline the flesh, but fasting doesn't justify us. Fasting is good for us to, 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 to teach us to, 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 to be conquerors over the flesh. But it does not justify you. Me being a pastor, me being here is not what justifies me. You, the, 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 the worship team, you being part of the worship team and being able to sing, that's not what justifies you. Giving, that's not what justifies you. What justifies us is what He did on the cross. That's what justifies us. That's why I can stand here and say, I'm as righteous as he is because he paid the price. He's removed. He's removed my sins from me. Right? 
please, please pass my phone. I just want to show you an example quickly. So, the word says, Hebrews, Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. God was not soft on sin. He's not like a happy go like, ah, you know, I'm just going to take it easy. No, 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 no. Sin was punished. And it, it was a hefty, heavy. There's not enough superlatives to, to describe how hefty the price of pain for sin was. Right? The word says, you are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. So, my phone. This is us. Sin. God can't see. His eyes are too pure to look on evil. When there's sin, can't once. Can't, God and sin can't be in the same. Can't, 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 can't. That's why Jesus had to cry. You, you, you have forsaken. God had to turn his back. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right? Sin has been removed. And look, I want you to see the light that shines on my hand. Look at that. God can see you now. He can speak to you. He can touch you. He can look at you. Not because of what you did. You were just there. He just took sin away. He took it away. Now you can talk. He says, he says the prayers of a righteous person availeth much. Because you are righteous now by what he did. He's taken away sin. The prayers of a righteous person availeth much. My ears are attentive to the prayers of a righteous person. Right? Now you, he can talk. The Garden of Eden before the fall is restored. Now we can walk with God. We can talk with God. He can hear us. He, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? Communion now. Co we can commune with him again. Because this has been taken away. Do you realize how much freedom that is? Do you see how much freedom we have? Do you see how much freedom we have? Hmm? Job 36, 7, he does not take his eyes off the righteous. He enthrones them with kings and exalts them forever. 1 Peter 3, 12, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. Hmm? When you're a righteous child of God. That's why you have the Holy Spirit in you. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will never reside in an unclean vessel. Never. The Holy Spirit resides because the vessel is deemed clean. Clean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's sad that as the church, we, we are known for the Ten Commandments. We are known for the Old Covenant. And we've got to change that. Because Hebrews chapter 10, go read Hebrews chapter 10. It talks about how he came, Jesus came to do away with the Old and to come instill the New Covenant. Right? It's sad. We are known for the Ten Commandments. We, 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 we are known for a system of regulations that we don't even use. We don't use. It's like an artist being known for the wrong song. Hmm? Hebrews 10, 9, here it is. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. It's canceled. He came, Matthew 5, 17, I came to fulfill the law. I came to keep all ten. And then the Jewish people went and wrote the Talmud, which is another 300 and odd that protects you from breaking the 10. He kept all of them. And then he goes into the exam, scores the exam. He passes summa cum laude. And then he calls all of us. He says, come, 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 come. I have passed. I came to fulfill it. I passed summa cum laude. Pass one, pass all. But some of you are still wanting to write the exam. I still want to do it. I want to do it myself. It's me. It's me. No, it's not you. 
It's all Him. All your desires. It's He wills. He puts those desires in your heart. They grind. What do they say? While, while they sleep, we grind. It's like, hey, it's not you. If you think it's you, imagine God said, oh, you think it's you. I, when were you born? Uh, 1976. Okay, I want you to pay me my oxygen bill from 1976. Why do I say that? There's so much grace at play that we are not aware of. There's so much at play. There's so much happening. The solar system being balanced and everything happening the way it's supposed to happen. That is God's grace. Walking, breathing. You're not even, that, when last you think of, oh, I'm breathing right now. You're not even thinking of that stuff. It's all Him. The, 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 the universe is sustained by the word that was spoken in the beginning. We are part of the universe. It's all Him. That's why, it's we, that's why we are able to give Him the glory because it's all Him. James 1.17, every good, every good and perfect gift comes from Him. Every means every. I mean, even in December when the malls are full and you get a parking space by the door, it's Him. Because that's a good thing, right? It's good to get a parking by the door, right? You say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Every system of morality is us trying to reach God, to get to where God is. However, our faith, God, <laughs> came to lift us up to where He is. Think about it, Judaism, Islam, all of that. It's a system of morality that is about getting to God. But our faith, it's God coming down as I came down the stairs to take us to Him. I pray. You know, I remember when Muhammad Ali died, he said, one of his famous sayings, and they publish it everywhere, he says, doing good on this earth um, is the rent you pay to get to heaven. Even my mom and them, I, you know, I, my mom eventually got saved when I was preaching at Rema, praise God. My mom goes to AME, goes on Foco Deep Proof. There's a song they sing there, <laughs> and they sing it for four hours. <laughs> you work for heaven. No, 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 no. Heaven is a free gift. No one deserves heaven. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. Amen. You know, God, God, God is a judge worth his salt. You know, he, if you're looking for justice in this country, you, when you go to a courtroom, you, 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 want to, you want to have confidence in the fact that the judge is going to judge fairly. Any judge, any judge worth his salt will, will judge properly, right? But you know what our, the, the judge did? The judge, we were guilty as sin. Guilty, guilty. Condemned to eternal damnation. We were guilty, 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 guilty. And he struck the gavel. He said, guilty, because we were guilty, right? But then he stood up from the, the high chair. He came down. Right? And he said, <laughs> I'll pay the price. I'll pay the price. I'll pay the price. You can't take yourself out of the state of sin. What makes you think you can take yourself out of the state of righteousness? You couldn't. You couldn't, trans you couldn't translate yourself out of the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. You couldn't. He did. So what makes you think you can translate yourself out of the kingdom of righteousness into you know I always say those of you who think of, you've messed up God's plan for your life get over yourself you're not that powerful we think too highly of ourselves oh I messed up God's plan for our life oh we're well, nah, nah. hmm? that's why Paul, Paul says I'm fully convinced he who began I'm fully convinced. What he's going to start, he's going to finish. 
You being here, is, you think you came here because you got invited to demonstrate, oh yeah, no, we're going to church. No, it's God finishing off what he started. <laughs> Putting desires in your heart and you going, yes and amen, and you're going. Nothing to do with it. Author and finisher. He started it, he's going to finish it. I'm going to church. No, 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 no. No, no, you, you, you are not going to church. It's the author and finisher having started something and him finishing it. He began it. He will develop it. He will perfect it. And he will complete it. Amen. The pressure is off. The pressure is off. The pressure is off. Now it's, it's, it's boldly coming into the presence now to receive grace and mercy in a time of need. Boldly coming. Hey, papaya, it's a king. And there's no courtly embroidery of language now or before you come into the presence of God. No, 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 no. Come boldly. And sometimes you just go, Whew. he goes, I know. I know. And I don't have to say anything because I've seen it with my five-year-old son. He'll play, 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 then he'll come and then he'll sit and he'll lie on my chest. Doesn't say a word. We don't say anything, but we've said so much. Five minutes, I'm, I want him to stay. Oh, don't go, don't go. And that's God with us. We come into his presence. He just wants us to just, just chill. And when you're righteous, because now it's, it's the guilt I get and the performance. I need to do a whole theater performance to be able to earn to be in the presence. But when you're righteous, you go, it's my dad. It's my dad. You don't... Ah. There's no, oh, you know, big prayers. No, no, it's just sometimes you can just sit in the presence of God and, and he just keeps on going, I love you. 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 You know, tonight, for the first time, tonight, tonight, I was standing there. You know what he said? Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, creator of the universe. Thank you. But, you know, the relationship it's good enough for me to go, Dad, pleasure. Pleasure. What a privilege. So can you see, we don't need to make up things now. We, we just, just, just come. Bring your, your high friends, your drunk friends, your, your b- bring all of them. The, the hymns and the, and the hers and the, everybody. Just bring them. And when they get crazy, just say, it's, it's okay, just chill. Just chill. Just trust in the power of the Holy Spirit. My friend Jairus from Trumpis, he asked me once, ah, the day he asked me to come, he's drunk as a skunk. Drunk, drunk, drunk. But I took him. I was like, ah, that's fine. Got there, we sat at the back because I didn't want any commotion. Sat, the pastor started preaching, fell asleep, gone. But you know what? He was there. I don't know what God did that day. I don't know what happened. But I look back to his life now. Serving God. Passionate about serving God. Not not ashamed of the gospel. So so do you understand? Now if it was a, no, but I can't take you drunk to church. It's like, you know, you're at a hospital, You've, somebody has just been hit by a car, you're bringing them into a hospital, but you're worried about what the people are going to say. Good to <laughs> Why did you bring this person here? The harvest is plenty, the laborers are few. I'll close with this. Psalms 103, verse 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, who forgives all your sins, who forgives all your iniquities, right? And then there's a divine order. He goes, who forgives all your sins. 
He heals all your diseases, right? Redeems your life from destruction, crowns your life with loving kindness and tender mercies, uh, satisfies your mouth with uh, good things, so your youth is renewed like the eagles. The divine order is you cannot believe that your diseases will be healed if you don't believe your sins are forgiven. You cannot believe that he will satisfy you with good things if you don't believe your sins are forgiven. You cannot believe that he'll redeem your life from destruction if you believe that your sins are, are, are not forgiven. Wow. It starts there. It starts there. It starts there. <laughs> People are struggling to believe God because they're going, hey, but eh, last week I'm going to I'm going to Focusing on what you did. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Am I not? I'm not advocating for violence. I'm trying to say there's nothing you can do to disqualify yourself as a born-again child of God, to take yourself out of that right state. That's why you can, you, you, you can boldly come, not because you are good, because He is good. You can boldly come because He's good. You are sure that He's good. Even with my mess, He's good. He says, he says their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. Their sins and lawless deeds I will remember no more. So when you come into his presence, last week, like, what are you talking about? That's why I came and died. That's why I paid the price. Because I knew <laughs> that it needed to happen. Amen. Last closing. Revelations 3, I think it's verse 18. It says, the Lamb of God which was sacrificed before the foundation of the world. The Lamb of God is? The Lamb of God is? It's not a trick question. Who is the Lamb of God? Jesus. Who is the Lamb of God? Jesus. The Lamb of God which was sacrificed before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the? World. So before he said, let there be, Jesus had already died. An omniscient God knows the people that he's going to create are people that are free moral agents. He knows exactly how it's going to go. So he took out the insurance policy before the event, signed it with his blood. So it was always about the grace of God. It was always about Jesus. I, he had always decided, I'm going to love them even if they don't love me. I'm going to be faithful to them even if they're not faithful to me. I'm going to bless them even if they don't bless me. There was a time in my life I was blessed financially, that is, and I need to ring fence that because sometimes you think when somebody's blessed financially, they're blessed. No, I was blessed financially, but in other areas, I was failing dismally. I never sold one cent. So can you see that it's, it's got nothing to do it's nothing to do with what I did it's the goodness of God just the goodness of God can you see how vast how wide how deep this love is it's, it's unfathomable amen let's pray Father we just Thank you for this time in your word, Lord. Continue, Lord. Continue to reveal yourself to us. We want to know you more. We want to know you more. So we can fully take advantage of what you died for us to have. Help us comprehend this love, Lord. Help us comprehend your grace. Help us take advantage of your grace.
thank you, Lord, for, for helping us be sensitive to hearing you convict us of our righteousness. Thank you for the awesome work on the cross. Thank you for the awesome work on the cross. What a great work it was and still is today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. 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 Amen.